You know, from the outside looking in, you might say that Nia Vardalos has it all going on, right? Winnipeg girl surprise hit movie, My Big Fat Greek Wedding. It took in more than $240 million at the box office, as they say. Hoppa! 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 A network TV series spun off from the movie, palling around with Hollywood Royals Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson. It was Rita who saw the stage show on which the film and series were based, a one-woman show that drew heavily on Neil's training at Second City, where she shared the stage with the likes of Amy Sedaris and this feller here, Stephen Colbert. But as is the manner of these things, all was not what it seemed. After a decade of unsuccessful fertility treatments and failed attempts at adoption, Nia was desperate to become a parent. We don't normally get into that kind of stuff on this show, but Nia discovered the American foster care system, applied, got a call, and with 14 hours, she and her husband, the actor Ian Gomez, were parents to a little girl. It's all part of this book called Instant Mom, and that's what I want to get into with her tonight. Mom! Be quiet! I'm talking about the book I wrote about you! Yes, it's a real. Time. Yes. How's life? It's good. Everything's good. How yeah, are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. Yeah. Such an interesting conversation. This new idea of family, right? It's, it's not even new but adoption, but just a conversation about what family is and how families develop mm -hmm. has really changed in the last 15 years. Yes, and for me, especially because I was raised in the same way that you were, mm -hmm. Yorgo. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. So you know that we were raised in a, a family where. Everyone had a mustache, the women too, and, <laughs> you know, everyone ate together and laughed together. Everyone knows your business. Everyone knows everything. So the minute I got married, it was like, oh, are you praying? Where's the baby? Yeah. You know, and I was like, oh, I'm trying. And it was shocking that it wasn't, you know, it's this thing that is your God-given right. And this thing that, you know, I had worked so hard for breaking into uh, the how I broke into show business, and I am the child of an immigrant family. I was taught work hard and things will come come to you right. and also deal with disappointment, of course, with grace. But this stopped me in my tracks. Not being able to have a child biologically was shocking for me. And then I just disappeared for a bit. Yeah. And I grieved it and I dealt with it. And I really learned a, a lot about uh, what is it that creates a family? Well, it's the bond of love. Yeah. So when we met our daughter, she was almost three years old. It had fallen through. So many times, so many times we were almost matched with, you know, birth mothers living in Ohio. We were on waiting lists in Greece. We were, we had applied here in Canada, trying anything we could. My husband is a New Yorker, we're living in Los Angeles. And then I heard about American foster care. And so when we got the call and we got to the parking lot, we saw a group of social workers and this little girl was in like there's just a, a group of people and there was a little girl in a social worker's arms and there were a lot of people in the parking lot but as we walked toward this grouping the little girl turned and looked at me and just looked at me and it's that feeling of just everything went quiet just quiet and all i thought was oh i found you jesus I, I, for my friends who've um, gone through a biological birth, they realize that the reason it takes nine months is because it takes you that long to get ready. Yeah. Well, they say it takes about seven months, and then you just want to have the kids. <laughs> yeah, but 14 hours seems really quick. Yeah, yeah. It was really uh, an experience that I, I think it was probably best because we didn't know what we were getting into, yeah. and Ian and I are so immature that it was probably best that we didn't know. But we ran through the house. We have a, had a guest room, and we just tore it apart and put a blow-up bed in there because we have nieces and nephews who would always visit, so we had SpongeBob sheets. You know, we put those out in a, a pink quilt and we just waited and then, you know, like that, the phone rang, the doorbell rang and she was here. And I remember uh, walking out into the front yard and as they brought her, sorry, <laughs> as they brought her into the front gate, I just thought, oh, she's home, you know. <laughs> and so is it what you thought it would be? Oh yeah, it's really great. I'm gonna drink water. <laughs> the process of talking to her, sharing with her. She's old enough to know, but not know. How do you manage all of that information that you know impacts a person? Um, I think the best thing to be is honest. So I try to show her that this is her life now, but she's never seen us act. She's mm -hmm. never seen our movies. 
it says instruction is not included, but there's enough detail in here about what the experience is like that in a way it helps people answer a lot of questions they're going to have about <laughs> yeah. this process, right? Yeah, I try very hard not to give advice because I, I, I find that, you, you know, in your life you get unsolicited advice. And yeah. the only thing that I say that works for me is that when I'm a fearless idiot, yeah. I, I tend to, I tend to uh, find happiness. It's, it's uh, way back when Rita Wilson and Tom Hanks came to my one-woman show. They're your godparents. Yes, kid, right? they yeah. baptized our daughter, did, like this arc later. But Super Greek, like drown the out of the kid like it happened to all of us? <laughs> we did it. You did it? And there's always it's olive traumatic. oil It's traumatic. It's traumatic. I know. I know. Rose, I know. We did it to my husband. You know. We did it to my husband. And then my husband, you know, you know my husband who looks, he has a beautiful bald hair, head, and then hair on the sides. That oil, the, of course, because the oil is always involved because everything ties into the Greek salad in some way. <laughs> and we just, you know, got him in there. His hair just looked like, just muskema. You know what I mean? Like, just a mess. It just a mess. The poor guy. And and um, yeah, anyway, so we, of course, then I, I did that to my daughter too. But yeah. you know, but when Tom Hanks called me and said, Rita and I have read your script and we would like to make your movie with my partner, Gary Getzman, I, I should have just gone, you can have it! You know, but I don't know why I found this inner voice in me that just said, say it, say it. And so I went, uh, Tom, um, I'd like to play the bride. And I don't know how on earth I had the absolute, uh, um, I don't wanna say balls, I'll just say labia, yeah. to, uh, <laughs> you know, to, um, to do it, but I did. I'll stick around more with Nia right after this. Mm -hmm. Let's Yes, my big fat Greek wedding was a monster hit. Mia hasn't quite scaled those same heights since, but does she care? I will ask. Uh, here tonight, we have uh, apple and orange. Uh, we all uh, different, but... Uh, in the end, uh, we all fruit. <laughs> After a big fat Greek wedding, then there's the expectation of what do you do now? How do you follow it up? And over time, even if you're a positive person, that'll destroy you. Well, the thing is, I was in a secret quest to be a mom, so none of those questions bothered me at all. And even still now, when I, you know, I'll be walking through Neiman Marcus, and there's always a contingency of our people, whether they be Persian or Italian or Irish, everyone feels the movie's about them, right? right. And they're always like, why don't you make another movie? And they're always yelling at me, and it's like, because I'm really happy being a mom. Right. And I'm writing movies and being in movies, too. It's a strange thing that happens that my um, desire has ended to work. Different kind of creativity, different responsibility, the different kind of art that you want to make? Yes, it's very different. The things that I want to do, I, I don't care what people think of me. I don't read reviews. I don't care what people say. If, I, if someone tells me, if a publicist says that someone's being particularly nasty or negative, I just, I get out of there. And I don't believe in that thing that people are saying about preaching a positive outlook. I, that's also really fake as well. It's about finding an inner peace and an inner happiness. It's called Instant Mom. Uh, there's a, and I think it's a positive thing, this proliferation of, of mommy blogs. There's a cult of motherhood now that exists that's almost more powerful than the Scientologists. You're afraid of them, <laughs> right? Um, but there's so little conversation now about fatherhood. And even the book is Instant Mom. And I was wondering about Ian and God, there's no, what do the guys do in this yeah. scenario? Yeah, I address that in the prologue because I don't write about my husband and his per our personal life yeah. in any way. We chose not to call it instant family. Right. But I'm very clear about how my husband rose to the task of fatherhood. I hate the term when a dad will stay home and say, I babysat last night. Yeah. It's like, oh, you mean parented? Yeah. <laughs> like, that's crazy. And, that, and yet, I do feel that there is a very us and them happening with moms who are being like all powerful earth moms and mommy bloggers. And we're not talking about the dads. And the dads are even more stay at home than we've ever had before, and there's a, a really great thing happening with a dual parenting. Good to see you. <laughs> 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 it's your mom's in the box. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you.